Hey guys, I'm back in another video rambling on about my 40 day grape detox. disclaimer I completed it yay and I didn't die <laughs> um, it's funny my sister um, I'm currently dog sitting for my uncles right now and my sister that's back on the mainland she was telling him that he's gonna come back home and I'm gonna be dead from the grapes just eating grapes and the dog is gonna be eating me and that's what my uncle is gonna come home to find <laughs> Which didn't happen, so if you're new to this channel, that's okay because so am I. <laughs> this is only my third video on YouTube and part of a series kind of illuminating my experience of doing a 40 day grape detox slash fast. Um, but yeah, so here we are talking about weak dose. If you've seen my first two videos, you'll know that I spoke upon like the physical things that I was noticing in just week one's um, span of the just eating grapes. And I haven't been putting anything, any content or video out at the end of each week um, because I wanted to like really sit with the experience and be present with it instead of just like uh, defining exactly what was going on without fully understanding myself and like processing like what it was kind of if that makes sense um so this means that i now have like so much in my heart that i kind of want to share and talk about so now we are here in week two's reflection i just want to make a short sweet synopsis of like what I was experiencing, then kind of like touch a little bit more on the overall theme that I was noticing that week. And that was detoxing emotionally. Hello, Ron. It's Ron. I'm a bit fearful that we're verging on what I call feelings territory. Feel. This is my hell. What the hell? I just got access to Netflix and I just started watching Parks and Rec, like just started, and I realized that Ron Swanson is my spirit animal at times. <laughs> but yeah, oh man, this video has been pretty difficult to create because I guess like the blockages in the body, I was just like being blocked by how to express it all. But I'm kind of ready to just kind of like put it out there. And so let's just talk about it. Throughout week two, I was continuing to experience things like on a physical level, um, I was noticing odd tastes in my mouth, almost like a metallic taste. Um, sometimes I would still get headaches, uh, short term headaches. Um, I was having fluctuations in my energy levels, which kind of ultimately like increased. Um, and I noticed that as I was running more so and like my endurance was uh, kind of building up. Um, another thing on that was that I wasn't really feeling achy knees as much. In the past, I would just like walk from like A to B and like at the end of the day, just like a regular day and my knees would be sore. Um, and I wasn't noticing that. Like, it's crazy because I always thought, well, like this is just what my life is. I just have to deal with it. Like I just have shitty knees and I won't ever be a runner, but I've been running like every morning for about 45 minutes, sometimes longer and I'm so impressed with like the way that like knock on wood that I'm not having as much joint pain at the end of the day as what I used to. Um, okay yeah so I was also having mental clarity I was still like breaking out in certain areas 
on my skin, but then that was clearing up, and I was having softer skin on my face, and uh, whiter whites in my eyes, and what else? Oh yeah, oh, at the end of week two, I lost a total of about like five to six pounds since the beginning, and I don't weigh that much in general. Like, I would like to kind of gain a little bit more healthy weight, and that was not, my goal was not to lose weight, but um, before I can gain healthy weight, I kind of have to like rid the toxins of my body. So anyways, I lost about five or six pounds. Um, and you know, all these were just signs that the acids or the toxins in my body were kind of just starting to stir up in the blood and just be expelled and I was like releasing all that. So, and then I also had more control over my hunger and cravings in week two. So like I, was kind of getting more used to just the consumption of the grapes and the raisins and I wasn't, you know, I was still having cravings, but it was, I wasn't like hungry. I didn't have any of those hunger pains. So to kind of set the stage of where I was at during this week, um, there was a hurricane that was coming through and so uh, my family out here all decided to kind of like get together in one location where just in case if there was any power outages at least we would be together and so this was like the beginning of week two like the first couple days and the act of fasting wasn't as challenging as what I kind of like expected it to be with um, being with so much family um, except for when everyone started to eat <laughs> and like uh, but it wasn't too difficult but anyways, it was actually like a good time. My spirits were pretty lifted. We were all together and, you know, just playing music and playing games and just making a whole event out of like the hurricane and just kind of making a party out of it. Um, so it was fun. I, I was feeling pretty good. And the only challenging part that I was experiencing was during like the times where everyone would start to eat, I was kind of like put on the spotlight and the questions were like coming in and like people were asking why are you doing this like you're already skinny you're gonna like you know just those thoughts that people kind of have of like what why is she just eating grapes you know it's not normal and um so i tried to address like all the questions to the best of my ability without um stepping on anyone's toes or like making people feel offended because I know people are curious, but, um, and they genuinely just want to know, but sometimes when you, like, uh, explain, like, this is what I'm doing for my body, they think and start looking about, um, looking and reflecting on their habits, their eating habits, and it makes them kind of, like, question, you know, what are they doing, and maybe, um, that can stir up, like, a psychological issue where they get offended because they're, like, they're focus has been shifted because what they know and what they're used to and their habits or their diet is a little bit like shooken up because they're like oh maybe like they start thinking you know the gears start turning but um anyways so like yeah I tried to answer all those questions and um but being the only vegan in my family I, I'm kind of used to it a little bit I just let people um I never tell anyone what to do. I just kind of like do my own thing and see if it's gonna like benefit me first before I even kind of like offer this information of like, hey, you know, like we might start feeling better if we stop constantly eating meat or what have you. But that's probably for a discussion of another time. Um, so it was a good first couple of days, you know, I was feeling lighthearted. I even had time, um, like some downtime to work on some of the passions that I like in um, creating jewelry and like drawing and certain other activities that kind of got me more in touch with my creative side. And so I was feeling pretty good. Um, after we left that one location and I came back to where I'm staying, um, I felt like a social hangover and Kind of just like, you know, when you're hanging out with all your friends all the time and then like you just need to go back home and like recluse. But it was weird because I um, was still had like a heightened physical energy going on and like my mind was still feeling pretty clear and like I had all this mental clarity. 
but um, like my emotions were just like drained or emotionally I was just kind of blah and it was kind of like I just wanted to binge on Netflix and also be on the treadmill at the same time so <laughs> it was kind of weird but right so I came back to the location that I'm staying at I guess midweek I was just feeling a little bit emotionally angsty and um, I was close with my sister at the time living and we had been together for four weeks straight um, in a tiny space where people were coming and going constantly and um, we were kind of both going through some heavy shit like dealing with that and like on our own um, spectrum but so like honestly anyone that kind of rubbed me the wrong way was just gonna like probably stir up some strong uh, response so really we were kind of just in um, this the best recipe for a perfect storm to just erupt and so that's what happened we got into it we started fighting and we hashed a lot of shit out and I was having you know um, visions of stuff from our past and and you know when you're fighting with family it's a lot more different than when you're just fighting with friends because you know like you know that person you know like you know how to push their buttons and you know like what sets them on fire and stuff so it was it was crazy and it kind of like kind of went on for a couple days um I love her so much and I know that she loves me too which is why I don't mind speaking about this because like we're both there for each other's healing and we both want to see the best version of each other so this is just part of the journey of like what I experienced so that's why I'm just going to talk about it <laughs> um and again like I'm not a very confrontational person at all like I'm really not I don't like to go after people or anything but um that's just what happened after pretty much fighting for a bit um we came to a resolution and we just kind of talked things out like on a more um, raw level uh, but I after that I was feeling this flow of energy come through me where I was feeling lighter as well but I noticed more of like the patterns and blockages that I had um, with other people so I was like at that time I'm like you know my mind was thinking a lot clearer and I was just like hey come on anyone that has problems with me like let's go I'm ready to heal all my relationships and kind of just like go through this phase of you know clearing the air out <laughs> and, but then I kind of had to you know back things up pump the brakes on my mind because not everyone is on the same journey they may not be ready to kind of face those things in the way that I am at the at the time period so but it was crucial to kind of let that go um, that energy so I started to write a lot and just like um run a lot of it out too that was just my method at the time in order to deal with that um, increased emotional energy um, I'm assuming that but um, you know it's funny I had researched so much on like the physical parts of like what I was probably gonna experience that I gave uh, very little thought to what was gonna happen like emotionally so that kind of just hit me all at once and I didn't really know what I was going through until I later reflected on it and I'm reflecting on it right now. So that week was a pretty illuminating experience because I was feeling all these highs and lows and it was um, pretty, pretty intense and so I began to doubt if I was making any progress with my health because I wasn't constantly feeling... Um, you know good and constantly feeling happy but now that I look back on it and I'm reflecting I'm realizing that and we're not just meant to feel happy 24 7 we're here we're conduits for these emotions that we're lucky enough and blessed enough to have come through our body we're allowed to have these broad spectrum of emotions and we're allowed to process them and understand them that's something that is more of a healthy state is the ability to feel a wide range of feelings and um, the healthier state that I was searching for is kind of 
a neutrality. It's kind of a central uh, state of peace versus just that temporary um, weather of emotions. So the climate is kind of like what um, I guess the goal is to get centered in and feel that peace. So we're just not really meant to have these joyous feelings 24-7. It can be it can be kind of draining. And we're meant to express. Like this energy in motion is really meant to flow through us. And that's kind of how I feel as we're like a conduit and a vessel. So like, you know, genuinely why do people detox? We're out of harmony and or things are out of harmony and imbalanced and we're entering into a time that is supposed to remove these accumulated blockages that have caused this. So by design, like we should be allowing things to move through us pretty freely. Going back to the concept of like this body that we have as a vessel, um, it's a vessel in the sense uh, where we're gathering constantly and releasing constantly. We want these cleared pathways and um, not just physically because a lot of times you know, we detox because we're physically feeling like shit, you know, we're overweight or underweight and we're feeling lethargic or generally some people are just sick and um, so we want those physical uh, benefits of um, weight loss or gain or um, feeling increased energy and the clarity that you get. And now I'm thinking like maybe that's why this video has kind of been like a little bit more difficult to create because physically it's easier to measure if there's a change like step on the scale and you know or your skin irritation is like going away or what have you but um, the emotional side it's just harder to quantify um, so and then during a fast um, there's gonna be a shit ton of time to really sit and face these things that come up from the past. Everyone has different events and everyone has their own perspective of situations that they've been through. Um, there's always, you could go to anyone in the room and just scratch the surface a little bit and then just open up the world to see what is underneath them, what is suffering, what what is going on and you know these deeper issues they run that's what they do they run deep and it could be things from our childhood situations that we had experienced or even like past generational like through our lineage um, just hurt and anger and sorrow uh, and these negative cords that are stuck with us that need to be released um, so you know, it's it's not anything to take lightly. Um, I know that when I was getting into this, I didn't even really think too much into the emotional side. I was just like, I feel like crap. I want to not feel like crap anymore, you know? <laughs> um, but these will resurface, and it's, it is important to give it the time and the space that it needs to alleviate and work through that. While fasting, I began to notice that food is just so intimate. You know, we're absorbing, we're sticking it into our bodies and absorbing it into each one of our cells, interstitially, all over the place. And it's meant to be nourishment. And when we are conditioned to believe that food brings happiness to our lives in certain you know, even like social gatherings, there's always food and family events, there's food to make people happy and it brings that feeling like, okay, so food makes me happy, um, but then we can use it to and um, abuse it just like addictions and it will sedate our mind and our anxieties. So, um, and I knew that's what I was doing in the past too. Like I was totally overeating and even though, you know, in my last video I said that I would overeat and eat a shit ton and wouldn't gain weight, but that's because I had a malabsorption problem and I needed to clean out my system before I could even gain weight. But, you know, during a fast, 
you're you don't really have that much in your body to break down and process at least with the grapes you know they're not that heavy of a food and they're alive and raw they're not cooked and so it was giving me that time to not think about making a grocery list go drive to the grocery store buy the food cook the food eat the food digest the food go into a food coma and yeah so those were the things that weren't happening during the fast and I'm so blessed to be able to uh, work through these these events and these thoughts that I have uh, attached to this body of mine. <laughs> Even just making this video now, I'm starting to really be affirmed that we do have this um, subtlety to ourselves that's not just physical. So our emotional, mental, physical body, they're all tightly woven together and it's interesting, you know, like I was feeling physically and mentally clear but emotionally I was kind of a wreck, um, but I guess I could ramble on about this and maybe that's information for like a future video later on in life, I just have to get through this series of the grape detox and kind of complete that, but um, I guess my next video is probably going to sum up probably the end of the fast and see like how I was feeling throughout that, but yeah, if anybody um, is going through something similar or just like emotionally feeling like some kind of detox, I would love to hear more about it, um, so I guess message or comment and I would love to connect, but cool. Um, I guess mahalo so much for being with me through this and I'll see you guys in the next one.